The cool thing, and I told you this before, is this is all through interneurons. Okay? Interneurons occur in all areas in the gray matter of the cord. White matter is white, right, because it's myelinated. What is white matter? It's axons. That's what you're looking at. It's axons. There's no cell bodies in there. It's just axons. Not all of them are myelinated. There's some unmyelinated ones in there, but it's just axons. Gray matter is cell bodies and interneurons. They are 30 times as numerous as alpha and gamma motor neurons. Now remember, gammas were one-third, right? 30 times as numerous. So when I activate something, I'm activating an interneuron or an interneuronal pool. I'm not necessarily just activating the muscle. It's the sum total of all the information coming down that's excitatory, all the information that's coming in that's inhibitory. Whoever's got the most points wins, right? And we either get a contraction or we don't get a contraction. These guys are small and highly excitable. They can sometimes fire spontaneously. They can fire at 1,500 times per second, okay? where we think of a typical motor neuron is about 150 milliseconds, okay? which comes down to about, what, 150 times per second. Okay? They're highly interconnected with one another. And a lot are going to synapse on anterior motor neurons, but a lot are responsible for the integrative functions. So in other words, when I put information into the nervous system, whether it's with a needle, or moxa, or electricity, or I hit them with a hammer, or I give them an herb, or I adjust them, I'm altering this motor neuronal pool. And as I change that pool, I'm going to be able to manipulate what goes on with the nervous system. OK, cortical efferents. Brain stuff, right? Corticospinal, rubrospinal, that kind of stuff. Mostly end on interneurons in the anterior horde of the cord. Only a couple actually will end on the alpha motor neuron itself. Most of them are going to end on other neurons, a lot of them inhibitory, which are going to help control and attenuate that function. So, take home message. I try to put these in so that all of this makes some sense. If you only know one page of this lecture, this is the one you need to know. Acupuncture influences muscle directly. I stick a needle in. I can be through a motor point. I can be through individual muscle fibers interrupting sarcomeres or making them do their thing. They can affect the gamma motor neurons of the intrafusal fibers, either directly or indirectly, because I'm changing tone or I'm literally in okay, a muscle spindle. They're going to influence it indirectly through the afferent cortical pathways. In other words, if I change the amount of input to the cortex, I'm going to change how excited or not excited that neuronal pool is. Great time to be a chiropractor, isn't it?